Hi YouTube. I just wanted to put together a quick video. I wanted to discuss fractional gold with you. Um, you know, some of the feedback that I've gotten has been, um, you know, people have been saying, eh, not my cup of tea, or eh, too high of a premium, or just, eh, in general, <laughs> not really into it. And I understand that view very well because I used to share it. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd just like to kind of talk to you guys about why my opinion has changed here that I have put a lot of thought into it, and I'm not saying I'm right. I might be on my own little island on this one, and, and that's perfectly fine. This is just kind of the way I'm viewing it here. Um, I do remember that Golden Pharaoh was putting out some pretty nice gold videos, and he had a lot of videos with fractional gold, with, with what he called them tiny gold. And I was the guy at the time saying, uh, Golden Pharaoh, what are you doing? Um, you know, it, aren't you paying a lot of premium on these? And if you want a full ounce, does it make sense to buy 10 one tenth ounce gold coins? And his answer was pretty simple. It doesn't matter. You pay the premium when you buy them, but you get the premium back when you sell them. Okay? And, you know, one great thing about Golden Pharaoh was, you know, he could share knowledge with you without getting impatient and angry if you didn't, either didn't get it right away or if you went against what he said. You know, he, he kind of shared his knowledge, and that was it. You can do it or you cannot do it. It wouldn't bother him either way, which is which is really the, a great way to teach people. You know, when you when you go into instant judgment mode, just because you share your knowledge and they uh, and they disagree, and then you get hot under the collar. I mean, that's just it's just not really the way to teach. So you know, I listened to what he said, and the more I thought about it, the more it made sense to me. And here's why: if my employer paid me in gold. He would pay me, or they, they would pay me, 32.3 ounces of gold a year. Guys, when I start stacking gold, it is going to really test me, okay, on a lot of different levels. It is going to test my frugality, my, um, I don't know if you want to call it ingenuity, but my, my scrambling to get extra money because it is going to take me a while to save up for every ounce of gold. It's going to be a tough one for me. There's no question, especially since, you know, I would assume that the price of gold will probably, probably be higher by the time I start really stacking in earnest. But my employer pays me 32.3 ounces of gold a year, and that's gross. If I go buy my take-home check after my health benefits are taken out, after taxes are taken out, and after my 401k contributions are taken out, literally, guys, I take home 18.4 ounces of gold a year. An ounce and a half a month is what I take home. And now I have to somehow find wiggle room in there. This doesn't include my wife's salary. I don't usually talk about my wife's salary. Actually, I'm not usually about it. I don't. Uh, she makes significantly less than I do. We are a two-income household. Okay, we're, we're a partnership in that regard. But I take home 18.4 ounces of gold a year. So I've got to pay all my bills and then somehow save some of that 18.4 ounces. Not easy. Okay. Silver, on the other hand, they pay me 2,100 ounces of silver per year with 1,200 ounces take home. Okay. And that, that's based off a of gold price about 1,300 and silver at 20. I, I use round numbers. But gold will definitely test me. So, I was thinking about working overtime and dedicating it to gold once it got opened up. It hasn't been open for a while, and that, that's frustrating. But, And then I thought about it. It would take me six 12-hour days of overtime to get one ounce of gold. That was staggering to me as well. So what am I getting at here? What I'm getting at is I'm using myself as basically the average worker, the average person trying to invest a little bit. And what I'm saying is an ounce of gold is kind of out of reach as far as regular purchases go. One thing I love about silver is, you know, it seems like you, you can, you know, consistently get, keep getting packages in the mail and you get the, the weight to it. And, you know, you get a tube here and a tube here, there and, you know, 5, 10, 15 ounces all the time. Meanwhile, I'll be saving my money up for like three months in order to get one, you know, gold eagle or one gold maple leaf, you know, or, or uh, it's, it's just 
the pool of buyers that you have access to is much smaller the higher you go up and even a full ounce and yes the bulk of my gold buying will be one ounce but I'm not turning my nose up at fractional gold I feel strongly that your pool of buyers will be much bigger with the smaller sizes okay and that's just kind of the way I'm gonna operate on this now as far as the, the fractional gold I love these little Lunars. I, I just do. I, I can't tell you guys how much I, I love the Silver Lunar series so much and that that passion for it has seamlessly went right over to the gold. I, I just love them. Um, I, I was asked by somebody, what do you collect? And I had a lot of trouble answering the question because with my silver, I'm literally everything that I'm buying, I'm saying, what is what is value here that I know I can make money on down the road, regardless of the price of silver? Okay, the Somali elephants were a great example of that, right? They were on sale at Atmex for 23 and change. And I know that if the price of silver was $15 in three years, I know that those coins will be worth more than the 23 that I paid. Okay, I just know that for a fact. And um, I felt very confident buying them. Okay, so that's kind of the approach I'm taking with silver now. You know, people keep saying to me, aren't you too attached to your stack? Yes, I'm very attached to my stack because I'm proud of it. But you know what? When it comes time to move it for a profit, I will be doing that. Whether it's to get more ounces or just to take some off the table, I will be doing that. Okay, no question. Once I reach my lifetime goal of 3,000 ounces, I have a plan in place. But as far as collecting goes, I am going to pursue this one tenth ounce lunar series hard. Um, right now, it's not really that big. Okay, and that's fine. I, that's perfectly fine with me. It means that I don't have to pay as much to, to collect the series. But some of these coins have tiny mintages. When I, I'm gonna do a closer look on this at some point, but literally I was looking at it and some of the coins have like six or 7,000 uh, coins min, uh, minted. I mean, that's, that's really small. That tells me there's not a lot of complete sets out there. So, you know, I will definitely be trying to put that together. And, you know, I'll be doing it slowly but surely. Um, but I've, I'm off to a pretty good start here with five. But that's, that's what I'm going to be pursuing. You know, it, it struck me as odd when I looked at this. And the lunar snake is less than an eagle. I paid less than this than I would have for an eagle. And it was basically uh, Canadian maple leaf prices. Right now on Atmex, you can get this for one fifty seventy three. The Eagle is one fifty three seventy nine. Okay, I know it's a small difference, but you know, like everything else, it, that small difference magnif uh, multiplied times I don't know however many you want to buy, you know, it adds up fast, right? But it's right in line with the price of a Canadian maple leaf. It's only a dollar more than a Canadian maple leaf. So for me, from my perspective. It was a no-brainer to buy this over an eagle. Now, somebody also mentioned that they wanted to put together a tiny uh, gold pieces from around the world collection. That's that's a fantastic idea too. You know, getting a tenth ounce maple leaf, a tenth ounce um, eagle, a uh, Krug. I mean, that sounds good to me as well. But uh, honestly, guys, I, that's just my perspective. Um, I love these little goldies, and I'm not. I'm not going to be chased off by the, the premium. I do understand multiply it by 10 and you're essentially paying $1,500 for an ounce of gold. Okay, I get that. But you also have to realize that that premium will be recaptured when you go to sell. So it's, that, that premium is not going to scare me away from, uh, away from buying them. And remember your pool of buyers when you go to sell. Uh, the smaller the amount of gold, the more people could potentially buy them. So that's just kind of the uh, wh how I'm operating. And you know, if I get my 50 ounces of gold down the road, I could see 10 ounces of that being fractional. So, all right, guys, that's my uh, take on fractional gold. Let me know what you think. I I'm really curious on this, and and I'm I'm very open-minded on this. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just telling you my thought process. Okay. Talk to you later.